the world knows him as a survivor. What I remember coming out is just seeing an empty hallway with a gunman coming towards me. At Columbine High School, he is so much more. He's created such an amazing atmosphere. He is respected. Frank, I just want to let you know personally how much I admire your courage and thank you for what you've done for that community. He is an expert. You know, we're seven miles away and we can help him every step of the way. Today marks the 15th anniversary. It gives you a mark of what the man's all about because he did stay. He is a finder of lost love. Our very first date was November 17th, 1970. I'll be back. Oh, yeah. He is a friend. When you can say you've, you know, spent the worst day of your life together, everything afterwards seems like it's doable. He is a man who's seen too much. You don't know how I felt that day. Frank DeAngelis takes us on a ride. <laughs> we never expected. Thank you for joining us. I am 9 News Education reporter Nelson Garcia. There are a few sayings around here at Columbine. One of them is that this is the most famous high school in America for all the wrong reasons. It is the site of one of the most horrific school shootings in American history. At the same time, this is not what this school nor its principal are all about. When he announced his plans to retire, we had this idea to follow him throughout his entire final year. Because there's another saying around here, the people who survived that tragic day are not victims, they are victors. Thanks in large part to a man who made it his mission to rebuild this community, Frank DeAngelis, a rebel with a cause. Coach D, Mr. D, Frank DeAngelis, principal of Columbine High School. Final day today? May 28th, 2014. I wanted to get to school this morning before anyone else. I was in the building around 5.15. The early morning hours provide solitude. You know, I could stay on for another 20 years. I love it so much. For a man who knows what it means to make news. I just needed that time in the building because I knew once teachers started arriving and students started arriving that I would have no time to myself. And I needed the time to reflect and it was good reflect over his 35 years. It is hard to believe though, 35 years. Appreciate the final moments. Good luck. The final moments. Uh -huh. You're gonna miss me. Of signing students' yearbooks. There we go, ladies, thank you. Good luck with finals. Use the remaining time. Bye, kiddo, congrats. Thanks for what do you Use the last day of school. It's over, we're off to college. To say goodbye. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure, and I'll be in touch. This is my first year at Columbine, but you, it has been probably my best experience in high school. Where'd you go before? Chow. And you like Columbine? Well, good. I love it. Chatfield's a great school, and, I'm, is. and I'm, glad I'm, yeah. I'm glad you're a rebel. I'm glad you're a rebel. Thanks, Mr. Duke. Thank you. Take the last few seconds. Good luck. To show his love. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. You're invited too. to my graduation party. Thank you so much for everything, Thanks. Mr. D. You're welcome. It's one thing for principals to say they love their kids. It's another thing to see it. You know, I remember it, like it was yesterday when you guys were here and I was welcoming the freshmen. I said, hey, I still got 180 days. This is going to be great. Class of 2017, it's your first day in high school. Every day for 35 years. Welcome, guys. Class smile. Frank DeAngelis has been a part of Columbine High School. All right, all right, all right. This is the principal's last first day of school, Columbine. welcoming incoming freshmen. Big group. Ready, Mr. D? It's the last one. Everything I do is the last one. Everything he does. Class of he does to create a lasting message. Guys, I want to talk about what it is to be a member of this important family. Every person who attends Columbine is linked to one another. It doesn't matter if you hang out at the skate park. It doesn't matter if you're a football player, if you are a cheerleader, you're all rebels. Every single student who comes here gets a Columbine link. It is a symbol of strength carried throughout the building. 
This bond, this chain gets stronger. A symbol created by the man affectionately known Baden. as Mr. D. And as your principal, I want to make sure that each and every one of you have the best experience possible. Along with an education here. Be a rebel. Love you too. He wants all students to feel like family. It's a new beginning. Uh, it'll go by so quickly and before you know it, they'll get ready to graduate. And before he knows it, his time at Columbine will be done. It was almost like a relief when I announced my retirement. And then I announced it publicly and I could not go back. You know, I didn't want to be the Brett Fire of uh, <laughs> high school principals. Though everyone here knows about the shootings. I have a, a handful of people, 20 people that have been with me every day since the tragedy happened. And we took care of each other. DeAngelis wants all his students to experience tradition. He wants them to know that this place is not all about tragedy. And I think this is the first step in a long journey. A journey for his students, a voyage for a principal which actually started more than 40 years ago. And you're going to be a part of that. About 22 miles due north of where he now stands. Each time I'm doing something, I savor a little bit more knowing, you know, this uh, is a last freshman orientation I'm going to do. After the break, what made Frank DeAngelis? North side guy. About the different types of religion. And how he almost never became a teacher. And they're rejoicing in hope of the glory of God. On the opposite side of town from Columbine High School, is random. It was a unique class. That class of 72 was just an outstanding class, one of the best ones that I ever had. Before Ranham High School closed, it was home to a student named Frank DeAngelis. Yeah, that's that's me when I was coaching baseball at Ranham. Chris Dittman first met DeAngelis on the baseball fields at Ranham High School as his teacher and coach. Quiet, skinny little kid that Loved the game of baseball. I grew up in North Denver. DeAngelis lived near 52nd Avenue and Tejon Street on the border of Adams County, overlooking downtown. It was just good to have Frank around. Dittman calls him a North Side guy, raised in a strong Italian home. I never met an Italian who wasn't related to Frank, and, and you know, it's somewhere down the road. But um, I think a lot of the values he picked up, he picked up from his religious beliefs. He's a very, very strong Catholic. Dittman says DeAngelis exuded the North Side's blue-collar toughness. I think Frank's greatest strength has always been his ability to develop relationships with people. One relationship that stands out, the woman he calls his first love. He's very genuine. What you see is what you get with him. Diane Meyer had a choice to make one day after gym class. And somebody said, there's two guys that really like you and they're down at the bottom of the stairs and you have to make a choice. And I, you know, I thought later, why, why do I have to make a choice? But I mean, that was years later, I think back to this. And I, I walked down and I saw who they were and, and well, I knew who they were. And, uh, and I thought, I picked Frank because he was, I felt like the nicer of the two. And uh, that's where we started. Meyer says back in high school, DeAngelis worked hard at athletics and academics. Teachers loved him, absolutely loved him. He was a favorite of the teachers across the board. But like most high school couples, they split up. We both have grown, obviously, over the years. He was a possessive Italian, and that's probably why we broke up. When DeAngelis graduated from Ranham in 1972, he was not thinking about becoming a teacher. Actually, when I enrolled in college my freshman year, I was in the accounting program for two years, and I knew something was wrong. While attending classes at Metro State, DeAngelis then changed his course. Chris Dittman was my high school psychology teacher, and he had a major impact on my life. And I said, God, I'm going to go back and be an educator. It was that inspiration from Dittman that changed the course of DeAngelis' life. He has said that to me on several occasions, and all I can say is it made it worthwhile what I did. 
Because if I could develop guys like him. It seems like I was 24 years old just starting my career yesterday, so. A career that started in the classroom. I knew that he would be a great teacher. Yeah. A love for the game of baseball. He was a great baseball coach. He did a great job at Columbine in baseball. All DeAngelis wanted to do was be like his mentor. It's just amazing it goes by so fast. But I'm proud of him. When we go to read The Crucible. One month into the school year. Because of their beliefs. We find Gina Doucette. She started at Columbine 25 years ago, back when Mr. D was a social studies teacher, long before he was ever a principal. It was a new challenge for me to get into administration, but I made a vow that I would never allow myself to distance myself from the kids. He wants students to experience a different kind of tradition, one he's been doing in English classes for more than 20 years. Good morning, my children. DeAngelis delivers a speech called In the Hands of an Angry God. When he pleases to cast his enemies down to hell. He likes to push the boundaries of public education. Oh, sinner, sit, sit before me. He likes to sinner. create educational memories. What, what constitutes freedom of speech? Can you say whatever you feel? You can talk about the different types of religion, the history of the religion. I came into this school in 1989, um, and they had established traditions that are still here. And kids look forward to that, to be part of that. That's the reason I, I love what I do. You know, I try to get into classes as often as possible. DeAngelis also tries to get to know every student especially in his final year. You pass those classes, that you can eat up some college credit. He's really good with the kids and he, he's good with interacting and, you know, it, it means a lot to me, like, as a student, knowing that our school principal truly does care. There's this feeling, maybe it's unspoken, but we want to make this the best year possible. When it comes to the teachers, there is something unusual here at Columbine. And these are all the students that, that I either taught or I was their principal. They're all teachers here at Columbine now. 28 of the 90 teachers total are alumni, linked directly to DeAngelis. Or Miss DeArmond, I was her teacher. Miss De, uh, Miss DeManna, Mr. Visser played on the first football team I coached. For all the days he spends in school, he spends many nights too. Like every high school, events go on at Columbine into the evening. So when I retire, I'm going to learn how to play guitar. That's really cool. Before the damage was done. And DeAngelis feels compelled to be there till the end. If he goes to football, he feels like he's got to go to band, you know. And so he just wants to be there for as many people as he can be. You know, we're all going to be leaving Columbine High School here in about three months. Seniors, you're going to be graduating. I'm going to be retiring. All through the year, putting in time, 70 plus hours a week. The last five or six years as I'm getting older, uh, take, it has its impact on me. He's worn out. He's worn out. Definitely worn out. He's woven in. Over my 35 years at Columbine High School, I think I've missed a total of maybe 20 days in 35 years, and the reason is I love being here. Homecoming is one of the biggest days of the school year. He says we're a part of his family, and you know he means it. But there is one thing that will keep him away. Frank DeAngelis is the principal of Columbine High School. Is Frank here? Where is Frank? Another sunrise upon Columbine High School. But this time, the leaves have changed and the temperatures have dropped. When it's autumn around here, that always means one thing. Tonight we play Horizon High School. It's a big game. One of the biggest traditions for any high school. Homecoming. And while everyone here is focused on the game, everyone here is actually pulling for a different kind of victory. 
for the one person not here. It's been like 35 years and he's never missed one, so it's crazy without him here. Without their principal, Frank DeAngelis. Yeah, Mr. DeAngelis isn't here tonight. He's in Washington right now. About 1,700 miles away. Hey, Senator Bennett, how are you? Frank DeAngelis. He's meeting with dignitaries at our nation's capital. Uh, my last year, so kind of memorable. This is your last year? Yeah, 35 years there. He's meeting with fellow principals from around the U.S. at a conference put on by the National Association of Secondary School Principals. If we keep going around the circle. While some people want to talk about the shootings. We're finishing up 15 years and we still deal with it. DeAngelis wants to talk about learning. You know, I supported my staff. But there is one thing he can't escape, even in this crowd. I'm not a hugger, but I'm hugging you. He just might be the most famous high school principal in the world. She told me... If I take a picture with anybody here, I want to take a picture with him. So he's missing his first homecoming ever. One of the things that bothers me a little bit is, is I am known because of safety and security because I've been a part of it, but I... He is one of six finalists for National Principal of the Year. But I have other leadership qualities. To all these students, he's their lead educator. He works very hard to know each student by name. He's their mentor. He is truly like... A father to all of us. I don't know how many people could have done what he's done, been here for 15 years, and when a lot of communities really get torn apart by those kinds of things. He's someone they're rooting for. Tonight we're here to celebrate our nation's finest secondary school leaders. He's someone that's being honored by his peers and praised by U.S. Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan. Everyone here works hard. Everyone here has, a, has accomplished extraordinary things. But thank God no one has had to go through what Frank has went through there. No one lost 12 students and one teacher. Shot to death April 20th, 1999. And his leadership, his tenacity, his staying with it through sort of unimaginable difficulties and staying the course, not for himself, but for his kids. It would have been a lot easier to leave and go do something else. And Frank DeAngelis. Columbine High School. Though he did not win the top award. And then to make it to the final three, it's just a great honor. The real winners may be the kids he stayed for. He doesn't just talk about Columbine family. This man walks the talk. Frank, I just want to let you know personally how much I admire your courage and thank you for what you've done for that community. A homecoming-like reception. 1,700 miles from home. When school shootings happen, he is often called upon as the expert. And our love is just being sent over to Arapaho because we know it's going to be a tough road. You know, there's no manual. We've become the manual for this. It's a variety of my life. His it, office you know, wall. When President Clinton spoke to the students at Dakota Ridge. May I, be the best uh, way. She's a Holocaust survivor. To peek into the life of Frank DeAngelis it's since the shootings. Idea. It's my wall of 99. And people ask, why am I still here? I look at that wall behind. It is a visual chronicle of the people who stood by his side and a reminder of those who needed him by theirs. This was Red Lakes, the Indian Reservation, in which shootings occurred. And then over here is Chardon. Um, went down below is Virginia Tech. Spent some time there. But of all the names and faces on this wall, there's only one person who was with DeAngelis the very moment hell hit Columbine. It, it was in April when I, um, Frank said, hey, come by my office. April 20th, 1999. The idea that the poet or the writer creates that truth. A first-year English teacher named Kiki Leba was meeting with his principal to discuss a continuing contract. It was coming over the radios that there were shots fired in the commons. It was the beginning of a tragedy that changed America. We can't determine what happens to us, but we can determine how we react. I'll tell you about what I really think about some of those things. <laughs> it was the beginning of a friendship between a rookie teacher and his principal, a friendship forged from pain. One of the last things I remember you know, looking down that hall and watching Frank running towards that gunfire. Unfortunately, there have been additional shootings after Columbine. And as evident by his wall, 
he's been running towards ever since. Uh, even though there are things up here that represent sorrow, but it also represents strength. Strength for Columbine, solace for victims like Pat Ireland. Pipe bombs are being thrown, like feels almost like the ground is shaking. Um, and then they come in. Ireland will forever be known as the boy in the window. I've been shot twice in the head and once in the foot, and one of the buck shots traveled through the left side of my brain and paralyzed me in my right side. And as he recovered from his physical wounds, DeAngelis was there to help him with his emotional ones. I don't think anybody would have blamed him for leaving, but I think that him not leaving showed his level of perseverance and dedication and the fact that he wasn't going to let Eva win. Not against his students. I made a promise to myself to help rebuild this community. Not against his teachers. Uh, my health was just awful. Sleep patterns were shot. I was just, it was awful. DeAngelis became the expert in dealing with pain. The fact that he was feeling it as well was a critical factor toward to the community being able to, uh, to rebuild and come back together as strong as we have. In the hours after the shootings, the community gathered at the Light of the World Church where DeAngelis was called to speak. Everybody gave him a standing ovation. And he, I really, I think he kind of dropped to his knees. He was just weak. And in this church, at his lowest point, DeAngelis found strength through God. When they announced my name, people just stood up and started clapping, and I, I lost it emotionally, and I couldn't even face them because of this guilt I was feeling. And I can remember shaking and, and just chills up and down my spine. And I turned around, and I found the words to say. And I, I remember telling them that you know, people are going to tell us that as time goes on, these wounds will heal. But I said, these scars and wounds that we have will last for a lifetime. You can see the burden of this on him and not, that he felt so, you know, responsible for everybody. Everybody. On December 13th, Arapahoe High School was unfortunately added to that wall. At 12.33 this afternoon, an individual came to the Arapahoe High School on the west side, entered the school armed with a shotgun. We do have one student down and they have found shotgun shells. An 18-year-old student, mad at a teacher, detonated a Molotov cocktail and shot senior Claire Davis in the head. The suspect has been found inside the school and he has deceased as a result of what appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And what's happening here are the same feelings, same fears, same iconic images. You talk about Combine and everything and it's just like, it can't happen to me, it can't happen to our school. These are scenes DeAngelis never wants to see. It didn't feel real until you see everybody and you're like, this really did happen. And the one person that you want to be here isn't here. These are tributes. She was very passionate about her horse riding. She was great at it. And she was a good friend. Like, I don't know how else to describe her as just loving, caring, and <laughs> she didn't deserve this. Tributes DeAngelis knows all too well. The week after the Arapaho shooting, Good morning, Rebels. This is Mr. D. DeAngelis wears Arapaho's colors of black and gold. Keeping Claire Davis, the young lady who was shot last Friday over at Arapaho, in our thoughts. Too many times. Thanks, and once again, thanks for everything. Love you guys. DeAngelis and Columbine students feel the need to offer support to schools who suffer shootings. You know, we're seven miles away, and we can help them every step of the way when they when they want us and when they need us and there will be times they will. All right. He and Leva. See you soon. They have become leaders in a field they never wanted to know. You know, there's no manual. We've become the manual for this. I'm sure I'll be receiving phone calls saying, what do we do now? It's three months. What do we do now for graduation? What do we do now next year? I think we've 
finally at a place where we can see, where we actually can feel our experience having value now as we help other schools, you know, helping our app host staff and Sandy Hook and other communities. And DeAngelis believes the security lessons learned from Columbine made a difference at Arapaho. Even though we're so saddened by the ones that we lost, our loved ones that we lost, it probably saved lives. An acceptance that matured over time. When you can say you've, you know, spent the worst day of your life together, everything afterwards seems like it's doable. Just brought us back to where we were. A wall that gives a man strength. You know, that's why this wall behind me has allowed me to get through some of the tough days. And allowed him to be that wall for others. Columbine High School represents hope and resolve. He may know how to handle the pain now, but that was not always the case. I do have flashbacks to what happened on April 20th. And he was in bad shape. Of all the days of the year, this day, April 20th is always the toughest. There's not a day that I don't wake up that I don't think about what happened. This year, this day, falls on Easter Sunday. But Frank DeAngelis is here to open up Columbine for the victims' families. Her middle name described her. She was a joy. Craig Scott. Her beauty reflected her kindness and compassion. Lost his sister, Rachel, that day. She wrote, just passing by, just coming through. Not staying long, I always knew. This home I have will never last. And every year, the very moment she was killed, Scott can always count on one thing. And we'll go up to the back entrance where Rachel was killed, and Mr. D will meet us right there. Even if it means reliving the pain. I do have flashbacks to what happened on April 20th because what I remember that day running out of my office is it was very quiet, which was very unusual. Difficult memories. I miss her. I miss her, uh, but I carry her memory with me and it, and it serves as, uh, as fuel as I go forward. Still difficult today. What I remember coming out is just seeing an empty hallway with a gunman coming towards me. And so today, when I walk down that hallway, um, it does take me back to that horrific day. Back to a time where he found sadness. There were times that were very difficult days and I could remember going out on my patio or on my deck and I was struggling. And he was in bad shape. He also found love. Remember, Diane Meyer was his high school sweetheart. But after high school, they went their separate ways, married and had kids of their own. And I think he got married in 1985. In the days after the shootings, Diane decided to send Frank a card, though she hadn't seen him in at least 15 years. Right after the Columbine tragedy had boxes of cards, probably 4,000. It said, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Um, please let us know if there's anything we can do. But reading those cards was too painful, so he put them away. Three years later, he was getting a divorce. In a marriage for 18 years and we had grown apart and there was nothing. I mean, I look back on it now and I wasn't there when I probably needed to be. And because I was so wrapped up in what was happening at Columbine High School and, and it was so easy to just drift apart and, and that's exactly what we did. That's when Frank found that card. All of a sudden, I see these boxes of cards sitting in the basement and I hadn't put them in storage, so I start reading a card, and within the first couple of cards I opened was from Diane. And he came upon my card. She said, you're probably not going to remember me. And I said, you got to be kidding me. You know, you were my first 
love my high school sweetheart. He called my mom and she gave him my number. And her mom had the same phone number and I remembered the phone number from back in the day and because I had called it so many times during high school. Really when he called, it, we, didn't even, it, it, we didn't miss a beat. It was like it was meant to be. We started talking, there weren't awkward moments. It was like we never stopped talking. It was just easy. It was easy. And she just listened and she provided the strength and uh, that was so important. I feel like it was divine intervention that we ended up back together again. I think he feels the same way. Out of all the cards, and so many things could have happened. I mean, I those boxes could have found themselves into storage. I think we have a good sense of humor together, and I think that that's something I don't think we had back in high school. But she says seeing Frank in the years after the tragedy was difficult. He'd get done with school and then he'd say, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And what he was doing, he'd go home and sit in the basement with his dog and and just, he was, he was a mess. And I'd look up to the skies and I'd see, envision 13 stars, uh, 13 loved ones looking down upon me. And I said, guys, I need your help. And they've never let me down. And he gets up every single day and he prays for 20 to 30 minutes every single day. And that's what got him through it. Through every day. Through every April 20th. Today marks the 15th anniversary of the Columbine tragedy. Every year, no matter what day of the week, DeAngelis cancels school on April 20th. It is a day in which a time to remember and a time to hope. Every year, he reads a tribute. In remembrance, I will now read the names of our 13 loved ones who so tragically lost their lives on April 20th, 1999. A tribute read to empty hallways. Cassie Bernal, Stephen Kernow, Corey DePooter, Kelly Fleming, Matt Kepter, Daniel Mauser, Danny Rohrbaugh, Dave Sanders, Rachel Scott, Isaiah Scholes, John Tomlin, Lauren Townsend, Kyle Velasquez. At this time, please join me in a moment of reflection as we pay tribute to our beloved 13 who so tragically lost their lives 15 years ago today. Thank you. I know that they're looking down upon us. 13 are giving me strength to walk into this building every day. They're giving me strength to pursue uh, a better life. Every year, Mr. D is a rock for the community, keeping his promise to stay. It didn't matter who was a senior, who was a freshman, who was on the football team or who was in the band. None of that mattered. We were just surviving together. Those little differences got put aside and, and we became unified. And I think that that's something Mr. DeAngelis did. Something the principal felt he had to do. But one of the things that I work on, my kids know I love them. Uh, and when people question that and said that I had no idea who my kids were and I don't care about them, that hurt. And so that was one of the most difficult things. That's why he's here on this day. I think that if we had had a principal that had bailed or had left, I think it would have been harder. Throughout the years, the prom assembly has always been his big moment. It's going to be emotional. I mean, uh, this is uh, 35 years coming to an end. So. so this year, he decides to do something crazy. After 35 years, I'm scared. Frank DeAngelis 
will do something he's never done before. This is Columbine High School's prom assembly. Guys, you can cut class whenever. I mean, this is the time. It's, it's our last assembly. Mr. D does not want anyone to miss it. It's going to be memorable, trust me. I don't want you to miss it. It's my last assembly, please. Ever since he became principal, the prom assembly. I've been Barry Manilow, I've been Willy Wonka, I've been Rocky Balboa. This has always been his chance to shine. Now, it's his last chance. Yeah, I, it's going to be emotional. I mean, uh, this is uh, 35 years coming to an end. So. 18 years as principal. Last one, baby. I know. Today. I love you. Love you too. But before understanding the finish, you have to know how this almost never happened. I mean, I remember coming over there and playing over there, and God, I was a senior in high school. When he was a senior at Random High School, don't forget, DeAngelis wanted to be an accountant. But his mentor, Chris Dittman, thought otherwise. He said, oh, That's what I want to do. And I said, Okay. You know, pursue your dream, and then when you're done with that, get into education. You need to teach, Frank, because you're good with kids. And after a 17-year career as a teacher and coach, DeAngelis was up for the job as Columbine's principal, against the man. I went, I interviewed first, and he's out in the office waiting, and I saw him, and he knew I was the other finalist. The man who inspired him to become a teacher. Dittman could have taken the job. Instead, he told the interviewers something surprising. I said, because there's three qualities of a, of, of a great principal that they have to have to be successful, and that's they have the support of the faculty uh, and staff and students and parents. And at that particular time, I began to format what I really thought that that school needed, too, and it was Frank DeAngelis. <laughs> Now comes the moment 18 years in the making. When he first became principal, he promised himself he would find a way to fly at his final assembly. He's also afraid of heights. And that's what life's all about. Overcoming those fears. He offers students his final installment of what he calls Papa D's life lessons. You're going to face many fears in your life. And you got to believe. Because if you believe in yourself, you'll get others to believe. Believe in being family. I want you to treat everyone well. Believe in that link. I go to my mailbox and I receive this letter. And I said, I can't believe it. Dear Mr. DeAngelis, Thank you so much for being such a great principal over the years. Kevin Yagavani transferred here. He never got his link. When I first started school here at Columbine, all my case workers had asked me if I felt worried about being at another new school. My life has been full of nine different principals. And things happen in our lives that we can't explain, but I want to read you something. It says, Dear Mr. DeAngelis, the acceptance and family atmosphere that you helped create here at Columbine has really grounded my life has helped me create friendships that I will always remember. Thank you for being such a great principal and instilling the best school-wide atmosphere I've ever had. At this time, I want Kevin Yagavani to come down so I can present him with the Columbine link. And I saw the reaction of the students when he received that, when he returned and they were hugging him and there were tears. And that's the atmosphere I wanted to create, that caring atmosphere. She would call out and get Mr. Moore to come in and he would run in and get us to shout, you know, one side of the room to the other side of the room. And that school spirit was such a great thing to happen. This is Mr. D, and just want to take this opportunity. This is the last time I'll get a chance to address you and know that even though I'm not going to be your principal, you're still going to be my kid. Yeah, I mean, there's no way you say goodbye to that, that high school. We know you'll be back. May 28th, 2014. Thanks. This is the tough part. 
What song, Mr. D? How are you doing, sir? Good. What do you got going this I think Frank... I mean, I, I don't know what else to say except I couldn't be more proud of him. We got about a minute left with you, Frank, and I guess the biggest question is, what do you do next? The saddest thing for me is when a student walks out of here saying, I don't want people to know I graduated from Columbine because that experience has been bad. Kevin, thanks, buddy. And I'm going to use your letter whenever I go speak, and yeah, it's important. Thank you. Thank you. After all the hugs goodbye. I'll be back. Oh, you're, yes. You're going to be a big smash. And uh, next year, when you start applying for colleges and things, let me know, and I'll write you a letter. Yeah, for sure. You're great. Thanks for everything. Thank thanks. After all the yearbook signings. Love you, Mr. B. Love you, too. Well, we're 12 and a half years into the 10-year plan. <laughs> Diane Meyer may finally marry her high school sweetheart. Thank you. Good luck. If she could ever get him out of high school. Yeah, you know, I'm looking down that hallway, and I see 35 years has passed before my eyes. More than anything, I'm looking forward to him being more relaxed. Something that I'm going to have to learn very quickly is a, a two-letter word, and that's no. Because Diane said, you know, you're retiring. I thought that means more time at home. I don't think he knows how not to shoulder everything. So it'll be interesting when he doesn't have to do it anymore. I started choking up when I did my announcement at the very end. And I said, if I uh, come out in the hallway, I'll be fine. And then that was not smart. <laughs> in all his time here. It was great having you freshman year. Well, I'll be back, right? Yeah. It's a great freshman year. Well, you guys are set. You're going to do well. Right? DeAngelis has learned some words are priceless. Being in this school really changed me and it brought me to maturity. I just have a hug real quick. Thanks. Oh my god, you're gonna make me cry. Love you, Mr. Love you too, buddy. You signed my yearbook. Most happily. Thank you so much Thanks for everything. everything. You guys are great. I'm gonna miss you guys lots. We'll see you though. Good luck the rest of the way, right? Thank you. Bye, Mr. Invite D. me to your graduation. Some words say it all. Good luck. Ryan, thank you for being more of a father to me than my dad ever was. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Enjoy. I'll see you. Thank you for everything. So when I walk out of my office now, what I see is I see students, the Lauren Townsend playing volleyball. I see the Rachel Scotts on stage. I see the Danny Rohrbach as a freshman, just being a freshman and hanging out with his friends and the Isaiah Schultz high-fiving me. And I see Danny Mauser down at church and Kelly Fleming down at church on Sundays. and. And it goes on and on in the Kyle Velasquez in the library. And now, instead of envisioning them laying in a pool of blood, I envision them living their lives. And that's the thing that kept me going. Bye, guys. See you soon. Love you, too, guys. The one thing that I can say, whether it was teaching, coaching, being a principal, I gave it my best.